Comedy Zone, and we're about to check out Mick Foley. He's got his stand-up routine. He's gonna tell us a bunch of tales of the road from his book, and I'm gonna get my Funko Pop autographed, of course. You know I collect Funko Pops, so let's go inside. DJ Dells, you know I love you. All right, we're here. That's a hardcore legend. Huh? And he's a WWE Hall of Famer. Ladies Woo! and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Mick Foley. Yeah! Foley! Foley! Man, we are a bunch, right? Awesome. <laughs> Is that kind of strange for you guys? Being this close? All right, so I'm back home from the 2020 Mick Foley show. Was it worth going to? That's the big question. I think so. If you're a fan of wrestling, this is something that you want to go to. And as far as pricing, $25 for a regular seat. And if you wanted the VIP, it was $50. Now, I recommend the VIP because if you get VIP, you sit up close and you get this 11 by 17 autograph with Mick Foley, Dude Love, Mankind, three autographs. The print is a nice quality print, and then you're able to bring whatever item you want, and he will autograph it too. If you know, unless it's something that he does not want to sign, of course he's not going to sign it. Brought the Funko Pop. You go to a convention, you're not going to get this for fifty dollars. No way are you getting something like this for fifty dollars. So, getting this and then seeing him perform live, telling amazing stories on the road. Uh, some I've heard before. I'm not going to lie. But there was a bunch that I did not hear. And um, from what I did not hear, it was worth it. And even the stuff that I knew about already, it was just cool to watch him tell these stories. It was really a lot of fun. He brought people up on stage to interact with while he was telling the stories. It was really great. I don't want to spoil the show, so I'm not going to really get into details of what exactly he speaks about. He has a hilarious story, though, with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Diamond Dallas Page. I've never heard this story in my life. You definitely will die laughing if you go to this show. He imitates Stone Cold pretty well, too, and he roasts the shit out of Diamond Dallas Page at one point. You know, a friendly roast, you know. Uh, it, it was so much fun hearing all these stories. And, um, you know, he's up there, one-man guy, just killing it on stage. He does the Q&A. At one point, this guy proposed to this chick on the stage. It was bonkers. I'll show you the footage to that real quick. We got ourselves a proposal. Oh, he said... Unbelievable. I mean, I didn't even see it coming, but it was fantastic. And it was during the Q&A. So, you know, when I seen that, I broke out the camera real quick. But as soon as I seen him starting to bend, I was like, I got to film this. I'm not going to post, like, video of the actual show because, you know, that just messes up the show. And um, you should never film a uh, stand-up or any kind of performance. I just think that's whack. You know, like, Chappelle, even, when you go see Dave Chappelle, he literally has, like, this these lock-up boxes where you can't even have your phone just so you don't have the urge to do that. Um, but, yeah, like, posting that video right there, that clip of him proposing, I think is awesome. I couldn't see why Mick wouldn't want that on the damn internet. That was amazing. And congratulations to that couple right there. That was really cool. And I tried to get an interview with him, he was like, you got to talk to my manager, and his manager wasn't there, or his agent, so it was all good. I wasn't mad. I mean, you know, I did it guerrilla style. I waited to the end, and I tried to make it happen. Uh, it works probably 90% of the time, but I caught an L, which is no big deal. One day, maybe I'll interview the great Mick Foley, and um, hopefully that does happen. Definitely check out all my interviews. We have tons of wrestling interviews, and they're fun because we don't talk about wrestling on most of them. We talk about just regular stuff, music, movies, and uh, you will enjoy it. So if you're new to the channel, definitely check that out. I'll try to put pop-ups on the screen. But once again, I do recommend going. Get the VIP because it's worth it, I think. And the VIP goes fast. Like, the VIP was sold out. And if you get the general admission, you enjoy the show, then you want to get a photo, maybe an autograph after, maybe like this right here, maybe like this right here. That's going to add up because I know the autographs are like 20 bucks. I don't know how much this was. Let's say it was 30. So like it's going to add up. So the VIP was well worth it and the show was great. So um, I give it two thumbs up. One thing funny to leave off with with this 
is I met him about six years ago in New York at this pro wrestling hall of fame, which is no longer in existence in New York. I think it's in Texas now, but he did like this fundraiser and he had all the original gear from all the characters and you got to get an autograph, a photo with him. And, uh, he was wearing the same exact t-shirt, this tie dye snowman t-shirt and this is from six years ago and he's still wearing the same t-shirt you could tell it was like older and this is the photo from like five six years ago can you hook it up take a job i don't know if i can do a professional version of that it'll be it'll be workman if anyone can do it right it's you my friend a lot of pressure i'm being recorded a lot of pressure. DJ Dell's uh, personal handcrafted old world socks for you. Wow. You don't see this type of craftsmanship anymore. That's real art right there. Boom. We got the sack. We got all the original outfits right here that he wore. And now I'm going to hit you with some video of me talking about it really quickly with him. So let's get into that. Is this one of your favorite t-shirts? I met you like five years ago in New York. You were wearing it at about... I do. I went a few years where it was way too big for me, and now it's not. So I'm trying to take advantage of wearing it. And it doubles as a winter coat in the South for me. And there you go. There's my video. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if you've seen the show. Give me your honest opinion on Mick Foley's show. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you recommend it? Um, let me know your favorite Mick Foley moments. I would definitely love to know. I love everything that he did with The Rock. I think that The Rock and Sock connection was amazing. One day, I think they should actually go in the Hall of Fame together as The Rock and Sock. I mean, the cage match is epic. But I was a huge fan of him in The Rock. I thought that was great. Uh, let me know yours in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Much love. We out. Baby, let me tell you something. My name is Rich Swan, and I'm here at the Wrestlecade. No, 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 no. Not the Starcade. The Wrestlecade, daddy. Where we just get things going. And I'm here with DJ Dells. Brother, we're out here, we're flipping, we're spinning, we're spitting, and we're doing things the way that you aren't used to. Yeah, it's called an alternative. We ain't doing things entertaining the world wrestling. Ha <laughs> ha, you see what I did there? Yeah, we're doing things the way we want to do it. And if you want to challenge me, if you want to see me, if you want to... and see me at my leisure. Woo! DJ Dells, you know I love you. So, you guys probably get asked all the time wrestling questions. Let's not talk wrestling. What's your favorite comedies of all times? Man, dog. Put me on the spot, dog. I love me some Bernie Mac. I love me some Chris Tucker. Man, but people gonna be like, all right. You lying? No, dog. I love me some Bill Burr. He ain't a black comedian, he a white comedian. Bill Burr, one of the realest mother truckers that you done ever seen in the world. He tells it like it is. I'll tell you what, man, that dude Bill Burr, he got me through a lot of stuff once, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody knows my story, but Bill Burr, like, I'd listen to his podcast and his comedy stand-ups, like, every day. And that dude, hey, if you ever see me, bud, please, bro. I know you like wrestling. I know you like Ric Flair and shit, too. Hey, I'm the next best thing, brother. <laughs> <It's> like, <no. laughs> if you had to listen to one either artist or album for the rest of your life, that's all you could listen to, either an artist or an album for the rest of your life, what would it be? I mean, no other music. We'll say artist so you can me, get I the whole catalog. Guitar. Um, I play guitar all the fucking time. Awesome. So, what uh, kind of guitar do you have? I, I used to have a Stratocaster. I used to have, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, a 12 string like um, Ibanez. Yep. Uh, um, what else? I had a hard, uh, a hard body uh, with the blues uh, steel uh, deal. I forgot what the fuck it was. A Galveston. Um, but so I'd listen to. Uh, Allison Chains. They're amazing. That's one of my first. Dirt my is first fire. Yes. yes. Dirt uh, is classic. Like down in a hole. Sugar. <laughs> <laughs>